Okay, Devin, this one's a little bit uh, weird because I need to show you something on my computer so the recording may not come out quite as clean, but we're hoping. We are on page 406. We're going right directly to the exercises because I want to show you how to do those first. I don't feel like the author does a good enough job showing you how to do those. He just leaves you to run. It's hard unless we take a look at this. So as you're looking at page 406 and you have your eyes bounce back and forth from the page to what we're doing up here, perhaps you can see how they're related. What we're trying to do now is extend from 7-2 when we found areas between curves and things. Now we're going to extend it a dimension and try to find volumes. Using an integral to collect all of the little teeny tiny disks like, like vinyls in a jukebox. But each vinyl's got a different size and we're going to have the integral add them all up to create a volume. That's the idea. But I want you to get the concept a little bit first. All of you take a look at this. Um, this, is, this is kind of what's going on so that you can see the 3D-ness of it. First thing I'm going to do is show you some chords across this circle. The circle is the base, and it's two-dimensional. And of course, the grid's right in the middle. So if I were to show you the chords, So what we're going to do is we're going to take this two-dimensional thing and we're going to split it up according to those chords that have been drawn across there. It's like blocks. Okay, and we're going to let something come out of the screen there that, that, that whose the base sits on those. So the vinyl, the records are on those lines, if you will, the, the vinyl records, okay? So if I drop the y-axis flat like this, it's not quite flat, but now you can see the base at an angle. It's starting to look three-dimensional. And these would be just a representative of four of the, of the, well, millions of squares. If we're gonna use squares to make this thing grow, then the base of the squares is one of the chords on the circle, and so it's only as tall as the length of that chord. So the black one's really short because its chord's really short. You see? Okay. And then we are going to, uh, it says you can rotate it anytime, just so that you can see what's going on. That's where they sit on there. Okay, did y'all catch that? Yes. Okay, we're gonna have just one square. We're gonna erase these and just have one square to show you how it grows as it sweeps across there. These are individual squares, a whole bunch of them. And as your biggest one is it gets to the diameter and then it will get smaller again as it comes down. And as we collect all of those, we get a solid. And so we keep them all intact and build the next one and we stack them all next to each other until it's and it gets really fast towards the end, so I may not be able to stop it right when it's complete, but I think you can see what's going on. Right about there, okay? So it almost kind of resembles a covered wagon, except for the ends where the covered wagon would be open are all closed in by circular walls that come around that are certain heights as well. So can you imagine the solid? It's kind of cool looking, right? Okay, um, so this would be the solid completed. This would be our original four squares inside so you can see where they fit. But there was a lot more than four as you can see right here. This was like built infinity, this is infinity. And we slide the square inside the solid so you can see how it grew and created each one of the lines coming through. So you see what's going on there? Yes. What's the dark and blue line towards hold the line? It's showing you the corners of the squares. And the corners of the squares start out in exactly the same place when it's really tiny. But then as the squares get wider, then the, then the corners of the tops of them get farther apart as they go out to the middle and then they come back out. They're just showing you the track 
of the corners of the squares as you go from triangle to triangle. Do you see it or you don't? Yeah? Okay. So that would be what we would call solid on a base um, that, that where the base is a circle. Now I want you to look in your book and see if you can see anything that resembles that at all. Yeah, this 1B looks just like that, what we were doing. Okay? Now, I haven't shown you the math behind it or how to get it done or how to use an integral yet, but I just want you to visualize and see the kind of solids we're trying to create with these different shapes on different shapes, squares on circles, for example. Okay? All right? I'm going to show you a few others just to drive the concept home and just because it's cool. Okay. Bless this you. one's called um, circle with equilateral triangles. So... Here's the chords we're going to split. I'm going to drop it down. Here's a couple of representative slices. Wow. Uh, we're going to create the solids. I'm just going to let it go. We're just going to create the solids. Whoa. And the track, that the, the, the black track is the top of the rectangle. So the triangle can't see it. Yeah. Okay. And this rotate any time. I want you to see what it looks like when we move it around. That's what your solid is looking like. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Great. Thanks. Want to do it again? Yeah. That's what it looks like from the top. That's what it looks like as we grew it out using each level of triangle. Do you see it? Um, uh, show the solid. There's your solid. There's the four original triangles inside it so you can see how it was built. And uh, here's the triangle that caused it to grow. There's the triangle that's being drugged through it so you can see that it all fits just right. Okay, you good with that one? Okay, I don't think I reset the other one. I gotta reset it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next one. The next one's called circle with an isosceles right triangle in it. So we still got a circular base. I'm gonna drop the y axis flat. We're gonna give you four representative triangles. See where they're sitting now? Yeah. We're gonna go isosceles right with the top right corner on the right, on the back side of it, okay? Um, see all this one. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna create the solid. The solid would look like this, with the, if we had all the triangles. It's an interesting looking building. I would like to walk inside it with a ceiling made like this so I can see. Okay, so there's your creative solid. Whoops. That's kind of cool looking. It looks like it has a flat front, but it doesn't look. I don't know if you can see that very well. No. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let's see. There's four triangles in there. Maybe it'll be easier to see if I rotate it. See the triangles? The back side of that, where the triangles are the tallest, is a circle, but it's also a circle in the front. So you couldn't slide down that. You'd end up sliding off the side because the circle would come down. So if we slide the triangle in the solid, so you can see how it was built, there it is. Pretty interesting. Okay, so I'll reset that one. I think I got one or two more. Uh, right triangle. So this is, we're going to leave the circle now. We're going to have the base be a right triangle. We're going to put semicircles on the triangle. Well, this is our base now. We'll drop it flat so we can see what we're going to build on. And these are five representative semicircles that we're going to build with it. Whoa. <laughs> you see, see what I'm saying? Be weird, yeah. See the bases of the uh, the circles, the diameters go from the y-axis over to the hypotenuse of that triangle. See it? Okay. Uh, we'll sweep one. No, let's create a solid. Oh, that's actually not bad. Pretty nice. It's hard to do. So yeah, half the we can handle that. Okay, half the solid? Yeah, it's okay. That's what the solid looks like. Here's what it would be. Oh, I'm going to put the five semicircles in there. This is what it would be if I rotated it. Can you kind of see what it, how it grows out dimensionally? Okay. And then uh, this is just sliding it inside the solid. Okay. One more. This one's a right triangle with right triangles. So where the base will be a right triangle, and so will the uh, slices. Here's, here's the slices. 
So slide one slide, so we go through like that. And it's probably not all that exciting, so I'll stop that. And they're showing you that, you know, it there. there. I have no idea. Okay, continue, Devin. I hope this works out. Oh, um, so what I want to talk to you about now is actually on that same video. I'll come back to this one. Turn off the projector. Yeah. So I'm for now, turn this off. And I want to talk to you about how we handle the volumes. These. What I was trying to show you was these volumes right here that people built, actually built them out of that foam stuff. This was one I built. <laughs> okay. uh, but the base of this one is, can you see me? Yeah, they have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh. It is there. <laughs> um, the base of this one happened to be two parabolas that were reflected across, I would assume, the y-axis. No, oh, the x-axis, I don't know. Yeah, probably like that. So these are parabolas across the base, and then I made equilateral triangles for the width of the parabola as it went out, and then I cut semicircles out of those a certain width up, and if you follow along in here, if you were to put a pencil along in there, it would also create a parabola that's kind of parallel to it. So the base of this thing kind of looks like this. It's out like this, and there's a, there's a big one, which is the equilateral triangles come out like this, and then there's a smaller one in here, which is the, which determines the radius of the circles that I cut out, semicircles, and then there's one over there. So this is the solid part that comes out here, and you have to be able to figure out the volume of this. Did so, you cut that by hand? Yeah, with, a, with an X-Acto knife, you know. Okay. And uh, we had another kid do this one. This was also a couple of parabolas, if I recall. One was bent harder than the other, and it ended up looking like a it was semicircles. It ended up looking like a uh, tornado. Uh, it's kind of cool looking. No, it's so these are called these are called uh, volume on a base. This one ended up looking like a beehive. Again, I can't remember. Let's see. This this curve right here was y equals x square roots of 36 minus x. He has all the work on here. There's a bee, beehive with a core. Oh, with a core removed, and the core, a semicircles are removed all the way in there, based on another thing that you can't see in there. And this one, well, this kid got really energetic. He was crazy. His name was Aaron Ball. One of my best students, but it looks like Allie's been over here with a candy. <laughs> okay. And this one, you can take apart a little bit. There was a piece of it that was a rainbow. This was the rainbow piece. This was the Beehive piece, see the middle's taken out of it too with semicircles. This right here, when you, it's all glued down, the rest of it's glued down, but this little piece right here, right there, that was piglet. You see the piglet? Yeah. From um, uh, Winnie the Pooh. And these were called the speakers. That's how we refer to them as we figured all the volumes. He was, um, I think it was pretty good. That was back before the turn of the millennium, so that's why they're so dusty. But anyway, everything that I've showed you so far has to do with these kinds of problems that you're doing in numbers one and two. Uh, it's just numbers one and two on the exercises so far. Okay? And the objective or the idea is to find the volume by thinking of each of those slices like you would a vinyl in a jukebox, like I said. And so if we did the first one where we had squares on a circle, that would be like doing the B part of number one. So we'll do that one together, show you how it goes, and then perhaps we'll give you an idea how to proceed with the others. Come to the office, please. Josie Klingler, Blaze Klingler, Kenny Rockwell, Ryan Harris, Landon Dusnip, Nathan Barris, Lindsay Easley, Ivan Harper, Heather Merrill, Kylie Zollinger, Natalie Kennedy, Matthew Taylor, Brett Miller, Tanya Scott, Sunday, Skyler Brownie, Avery Helm, Sailor Anderson, Alyssa Coyle, Kellen Garn, Gordon Peterson, Riley Weeks, Blake Hocock, Aaron Powell, Spencer Willis, Chandler Moss, Clover Hanks, Clover Harris, Becca Galbraith, Riley Genta, and Caleb Schroeder. Please come to the office. Thank goodness for a school and not a department store. <laughs> okay, so take a look at uh, number 1B. That's what we're going to try to do. This one, the very first one you saw. It says, um, in exercises 1 or 2, find a formula 
for the area A of the cross sections of the solid that are perpendicular to the x-axis. We're actually going to go farther and actually find the volume. They just want you to find the area of one of these representative slices. But we're going to take it a step further. You don't have to. You can do just whatever's because they're going to make you do it over here for sure. But um, I'm actually going to go through the whole process and find the volume of such a thing. And it's set on a circle. Can you still can you still see this on there? Uh, yeah. Not very much. Yeah. Is better? Okay. And so this would be this would be a square that you're looking right straight down on. We haven't laid the thing flat. And so if I were to take that out of my board, that it's coming out this way like this, I were to take that out and lay it down, it, that particular slice would look like this, right? And what, here's what I want to do. I want to find the area of this as a function of x, and I'm going to let it be dx thick. That will add the third dimension in my integral so that I can find volumes. That's the dx part. So I'm going to find the area times how thick it is, which is dx. That adds the third dimension. So this little part right here is dx. And we need to find the area of this by finding the length of a side and the length of this side. They'll be the same, but the lengths of those sides are from here to here, right? Which is twice from here to here. Why do I say that? Because I can find this up here. I can find the y value of that point if I know what's restricting it, which is the area of a circle with a radius of 1. So the area of this circle that I'm dealing with, dealing with <coughs> which restricts the lengths of my chords, is the equation of it is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Did you have anyone ask that? Oh, I don't know. I don't care about that stuff. Hang on. <laughs> So you all understood that solving, right? Yes. Which means that this y value, if you want to talk about this point on this circle right here, it is the point x square root of 1 minus x squared. That's what its value is. That's the point on the circle because that's xy. Do you agree? And it is the y value that is half of my chord. Yeah? So the length of this square over here, which is from here to here, is 2 square roots of 1 minus x squared. Will you buy that? Do you understand where we all, that all came from? From the equation of the circle? So this is also 2 square roots of <coughs> 1 minus x squared. So the area, this is what I, in general, this is what I intend to integrate. I'm going to integrate from, and you can go from negative 1 to 1, or you can go from 0 to 1 and double it. Doesn't matter, right? It's all symmetric. I'll go from negative 1 to 1. Just take it all into account. I have the 2 out here. And then it's going, what I'm going to do is have this integral collect the volumes of all of these things that happen to be dx thick. That means area times the thickness, which would be 4 times 1 minus x squared dx. That's because I took this times this. The 2 times the 2 is the 4, and the root 1 minus x squared, and one, root 1 minus x squared, and multiply those to get 1 minus x squared. Y'all follow? So this isn't that bad. This really isn't that bad. Take the 4 out. If y'all understand how I got from here to here, that's my big question. That's, that's the big killer. Everybody okay on that? Now I'm going to take the 4 out and integrate from negative 1 to 1 of that right there, which would, well, I'll go ahead and write it down. And that integral is going to be um, 4 times x minus 1 third x cubed evaluated from negative 1 to 1. And I would actually really like to change my mind right now and make this an 8 and this go from 0. Would that be okay? Did you catch all that? That way, because I can see when I plug 0 in, it's going to give me nothing, so I only have to really plug one thing in. I like that. Okay. But make sure you check that, because sometimes if there's trig in here, for example, the cosine of 0 is 1. Don't just assume because that's 0, you're going to get nothing in the second one. That isn't always the case, but it is in this one. Okay, So it's going to be 8 times 1 minus 1 third. 1 minus a third is 2 thirds, 2 thirds times 8 is 16 thirds. 16 thirds what? 16 cubic units. 16 thirds cubic units. Whatever they are. And that would be the volume of that first thing that I showed you where the squares grew out and came out like this. It's kind of cool. It's kind of powerful that you're able to find a volume of something like that. 
And it wasn't all that hard. So is that just, that, that's the whole thing? For that, that's the volume of the whole thing that grew oh, out like that, came out like this. <laughs> that's the volume of it is mm, five and a third cubic units. Okay. And that's the weird Where a unit is, thing. a unit is this long. So a cubic unit, you can see it's not much more than, goes out that far, the, the thing that came out here is not going to be much more than three or four of those. It's five and a third. What'd you say? It's like the wagon thing. That's yeah, the yeah, the wagon thing that we saw, yeah. The volume of that would be this. And so I need you to understand the instructions, though, on one, A, B, C, and D. He wants you to just figure out this part. That's A of X. And he wants you to be able to just figure it out because that, that's the part where people fail with these things, is figuring out that, what they want to integrate. If they can figure that out. They can do the integral with their calculator. This is the hard part, and that's why he wants you to practice just that. So let's read the instructions again so you know what you're after. It says... Um, in exercises one and two, find a formula for the area of a slice in terms of x perpendicular to the x-axis. And so in the first place it was the area of a square, and that square's base was determined by the area of the circle that it was sitting on. That's why we had this down here, to be able to convert it to this geometric shape that we're making solid out of. <coughs> I want to remind you of a few facts before you actually tackle this stuff about geometric shapes. So we're going to do a little geometry lecture now so that you can have something to fall back on because everything you're going to be figuring is geometric. Consider this for a minute. Let's, let's talk about a square again. But let's say that it's like you see the drawing on number or part C, 1C. You see we're still dealing with squares? Yeah. But it's now the diagonal that lies in the circle. We find the area of a square by multiplying this times this. But this will be the thing that we'll be able to figure from the circle. And that's extra two. Or in other words, if we figure out what this is, then the length and the width that you're going to have to multiply together will be whatever this is divided by root two. And this will be determined by the chord of the circle. You see what I'm saying? And you're going to need these two thingies in order to find the area of this to put here, which is what he wants you to find. So you're going to get this from the circle it's sitting on, but you need these to figure the area. Is that enough of an idea? I think so. Brent's always over here nodding at me, though. Yeah, I can do it. Would you just let me do it? Okay. Um, and there were some of the rest of you who were looking at me like, hmm. No, but I don't want to admit it. <laughs> but no, but I'll get it eventually. I don't want to actually do this problem for you. I just want to give you an idea of how to proceed. But you need these two things, whereas the circles equation will give you this. Okay? All right. Uh, the other thing I want you to, you've, you've probably seen, maybe you've seen this, and if you have, you probably can't recall it. But I want to talk to you about the area of an equilateral triangle in particular. An equilateral triangle, that's pretty crappy, hang on, it's more isosceles. Okay, so there's an equilateral triangle, and if you know the length of a side, what I'm asking you to consider is, well, D, I'm asking you to consider D. See the equilateral triangle sitting there? Can you see that one of its sides sits on the cords now? Okay. Let's see if we could figure out a formula for finding the area of this if I know just a side, and that's it. Our normal area for triangles is area equals one-half base times height. That would be the base here, and the height would be here. And so that's our normal area, and, and, but what are these things? How's this going to work out? Well, if I know this, I need to have kind of this in terms of it. I guess what I'm saying is, is that uh, because this is an equilateral triangle, I know that this is a 60 30, which means that if this is B, this is half of B, or B over 2, I'm going to write it that way. This length right here is B over 2, which means that this height right here is B over 2 root 3. Remember that? About special right triangles from Trig? No. Y'all follow them? No? I mean, I remember it now, but... I can show you why. Do you need to see why, Ryan? Yes. 
Okay, get an equilateral triangle. All right, I already got one drawn, but I'm gonna come back to that one in the stuff that I've got on there. Uh, this is a 30, 60, 90. And this is, if this were 2x, this would be x because this thing does three things. It cuts the side in half that it hits, it cuts the angle in half that it hits, that's how we know that's a 30, and it's also perpendicular, okay? And so if I make this 2x and this x, that way I dodge the fraction bullet for now. Uh, if I let that be y, which is the height of that rectangle, then Pythagorean theorem tells me that y squared plus x squared equals 4x squared, because I've got to square all of that for Pythagorean, okay? 4x squared minus x squared is 3x squared, so y squared is equal to 3x squared. And so y, this length right here, is going to be x, because there's a pair of x's, root 3. So what I'm saying is, whatever length this short leg is right here, times root 3 is the long leg. Y'all see that? Which means that if I convert this based on what I'm showing here, it's only specific to an equilateral triangle. I get that area is equal to 1 half of b times b root 3 over 2. Y'all follow on that? Okay. So remember, that's over 1. So I've got 1 times b times b times root 3. That's b squared root 3 in the numerator. In the denominator, I have 2 times 1 times 2. So the area of an equilateral triangle given the length of a leg, that's b. That's the length of a leg. That's the part sitting in the circle that you have to figure out for the d part. That area is that length or that, that chord length, root 3 over 2. Would it be over 4? Uh, yes, I don't know why I said two, because I was talking while I was trying to lecture, thank you. It is, b, b squared root 3 over 4. Okay, so that's the area where this b thingy is the length, this length right here, one of the lengths of the sides of an equilateral triangle. And it's that piece that's sitting on the chord of the circle in d part. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that. You might want to write that down or take a picture or view this video or something. Is this thing still playing? Yep. Okay. So that'll give you some hints on how to handle that kind of stuff. You can talk to each other and try to figure that out. It's kind of kind of interesting, first go through. Now I want to talk to you about things called volumes of revolution. It's a different way of finding volume. Still has to do with uh, slices. Still the same notion, same concept. But these slices have different shapes. Some of them are squares, some of them are triangles circles. Okay, so what I want to talk to you, I'm going to show you some other things off the computer here in just a minute, but I want you to look at, um, I want you to look at what's going on, uh, example two, page 400. So go back up. Example two, page 400. That example has to do with the drawing in the green in the middle of the page in the column, and also is very much related to the, what we call volume of revolution. Okay, so in this picture right here, this is the two-dimensional shape right there, right here, and it is determined by the function 2 plus x cosine x. If you want to graph that for yourself, you can. You don't have to. But that's what this piece of the curve is right here. And we're, going to only, we're only going to uh, consider it from a, which is negative 2, to b, which is positive 2. That's our integral. Okay. All right. And the, what we're going to do is we're going to take that flat space and we're going to pull it forward or backwards, however you see it, and we're going we're to have an axis on the x-axis and it's going to rotate around and when it's complete it will create that solid that you see down below it. You see? And what we're going to do is take slices like that pink slice, pull it out of there, it'll be a, lay it down, it will be a circle whose thickness is dx. Okay, so if I pull that circle, I, I got this curve that looks like this. I don't know if that's very good, but anyway. Like this, and here's the x-axis. I'm going to rotate it around like this, and I'm going to pull out this thing right here. And this is the radius of it, because it goes down to here, right? Where the other part mm, came through, like that. So I'm going to pull that disc out of there like a record, like a vinyl, and write it, put it right here, and I'm going to tell you that it is dx thick. And its area is dependent upon the radius. Its area is pi r squared. Well, the radius, in this case, is determined by the function at this x value. So the radius is 
Um, what did I tell you? What? What's the function? Two plus x cosine l. Two plus x cosine x. <clears throat> square. Don't forget square. Now that might be a little difficult to integrate by hand. You would have to foil this out, distribute a pi, and integrate each piece. Calculator will handle this beautifully. This is the integral that it will be. You will integrate from negative 2 to 2. Do you see that? And it will be pi times 2 plus x cosine x squared dx. That's the thickness of the circle. This is the area of the circle. Well, this is the area of the circle. It's pi, but pi is constant, so I pulled it out. And then you grab your calculator and do it. That's called the disk method because what I pulled out of there was a disk. So, solid circle. Ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Yes, no? Sure. You wanna talk about that some more? Do you wanna, did you actually do it? You're yes. supposed to come out with 52.43 cubic units. How come you don't need to multiply by two or anything? Because we're integrating from negative two to two? And there's no symmetry anyway. I would not want to integrate from 0 to 2 because the left side is not like the right side. Yeah, but it just <coughs> swivels all the way around. Yeah. Oh, the x is counted for, okay, the whole thing. Yeah, okay. it's, not like, it's not like trying to find the base because it's made up of half, a two half chords. It's not that. The half chord is the radius, and the radius is involved in finding the area of that circle, so we only need one. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, so if you need to so, find the diameter, like... Yeah, if you need to find the diameter, you would have to double this location right here. Okay, but you don't have to find the diameter because the area formula is dependent upon the radius. Okay. And the radius is from here to here. That makes sense. Okay. We all right? Any other questions about that one? It's called the disk method because the circle we pulled out is a disk. There are other methods, which you will see in example three. Are you ready for that one? Example three says... The region in the first quadrant enclosed by the y-axis and the graphs of cosine x and sine x, that's what you're seeing to the left. Do you all see it in that yellow triangular looking thing? Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Where's that? No, I need this. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you, if you were to draw the cosine curve and the sine curve, it looks like that triangular thing sticking out of the y-axis there, but it's not triangular. It's made up of a couple of curves. And what we're going to do is take that yellow piece and we're going to rotate it around the x-axis again and it's going to leave a hole in the middle. And the hole's going to get bigger the farther out you go. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand what it means by the rotating around the x-axis. Like, how do we know how far it's rotating? It goes all the way around until it has completed itself and makes it solid that's made up of a bunch of circles. Would you like to see a, a video of that first to get the concept in your head? I don't know. Yeah, I just can't understand what it's like. It'll just revolve around the x-axis, and then bam, it's a solid. So is it going to be like? Okay, I'll show you. Like a shape with like a cone in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, it'll have a cone. Well, kind of a cone. It won't be quite cone or cone shape. It won't be quite conical because it's still made up of a curve. But it will have a hole in it, and the hole will get bigger the farther out you go, until you get to the point where it just has a nice sharp edge. Okay. Just really quickly because Kyle wanted to see it and it's kind of cool anyway. I'll show you this stuff. Uh, I, I can't even see it. It's almost, it's almost right there. I'm doing the projector back on while we're waiting and I'll watch me hunting around all this. Nice. 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 Okay, so this isn't quite the shape we were talking about, but this is just the square of x. You recognize that? And uh, notice that this thing where my arrow's pointing here, this is the axis of rotation in this case. I want to move that. I think I can just... How does that determine, though? Like, on this one, how do we know where it's small? It gets that around, around the, the, the axis. axis. Okay. Okay. Drag x. So if I drag the axis of rotation up to the being the x-axis, take a look at what's going to happen. It says, show all the original rectangles. 
Okay, those are really wide rectangles, are really, really wide. Those are all DX thick, if you will. Um, show the reflected area. So if it's going to rotate halfway around, it will look like that. We're going to revolve one rectangle. See how it's coming? See how it's working, Kyle? Yeah. It's coming around. We'll close up right there. Gives you a disc. And then see all the discs and washers? If we divided it that grossly, that's what it would look like. Yeah. And those discs are like vinyls that I was talking about. They're all DX thick. Do you understand the rotation now? Yeah. Yeah, I can put, put, like, put the hole in it so it's like all the hole points. Because it's like a cone shape. Here's a spin region disc and washer. Now notice that the axis of rotation left a hole in the middle here. That's what we're going to talk about next so that you can understand that one. Um, Move the axis of revolution. That one close it up. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get that back. Okay. So if we revolve these, this one, it revolves it around, leaves a hole in the middle. Yeah, okay. And each one of the slices is now not a vinyl, it's a washer. It's not a disc, it's a washer. I want to see it the other way. I want to see it the other way. You follow that? Okay. Um, sweep the whole thing. Oh, they're showing you that the discs or the washers get bigger, but the hole in the middle remains the same in this case. And uh, we revolve it one more time so that you can see what's going on and return back up there, and that's the solid that you get. Are you okay on the rotation now? Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, so let me turn this off again. Okay, so I'm asking you to consider the solid that would be formed. They show you that. They do a pretty good drawing of it. On page 401, we're going to take that triangular looking thing. It's not really a triangle, but made up of sine and cosine when they first intersect. And we're going to pull that forward or backwards, however you saw it in the diagram I just showed you, the, the, the motion thing. It's going to come around like that. It's going to leave a hole in the middle that's shaped like a cone. There isn't really a cone. Okay? And we're going to integrate. Where do they cross, by the way? Where does sine and cosine cross for the first time? Pi fourths. Pi fourths. That's when x is pi fourths, and the value where they cross is root two over two. Remember that from trig? In the first quadrant, that's the very first time they have the same value, root two over two, is when you've reached a 45 degree triangle. Okay, so if I were to take that, I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to attempt to draw that drawing. Or just for Devin's sake, we're on page 401, that drawing that's in about the top third of the page. I'm going to pull one of the, I'm going to pull that pink slice out, and it's going to look like this. At that point, it's got, I don't know what size hole it's got, but it's got a hole in it, right? That particular slice. And this slice, again, is DX thick. So that'll be accounted for. I'm interested in this area here. This is called a ring. In, in geometry, this is called a ring. And it's found by taking this radius, which I'm going to call capital R, and this radius, little r, and finding the area of the circle before we cut the hole out, and then subtracting the area of the hole. That will leave me with the ring. So basically, what I, I guess what I'm telling you is, is that the area of the shaded stuff right here is going to be pi r squared. That would, <coughs> that's what the area would be if it were solid, minus pi r squared. That would leave me with the area of the ring. That's A of X. And the DX makes it a volume. So this is A of X. And this is its thickness. And this will gather them all together from 0 to pi fourths, she's holding. That's along the X axis to where they intersect. You see? And it will be pi. I can factor a pi out of this. And it will be R squared minus R squared, like that. OK? So I've got a pi sticking out here. This is my constant. In this case, what is r squared? What is this length from here to here? Cosine x. Isn't that the radius of the big one? Because cosine is above sine. Okay. And what is this one's radius? What's the radius of the hole? Sine. Yes. Okay. Good luck. Do you understand why we decided the big radius is cosine and the little radius is sine? Can you see that from the diagram or not? Yeah. 
it because on the initial cone thingy, the top, like the top curve is cosine and the bottom curve is sine? Yes. Okay. And if I were to draw that little piece to, to reiterate, I hope if you can see it right here, but if I were to draw that piece that they've got, here's sine curve coming out like this. Here's cosine curve coming down like this. It's this little triangle. This right here is the big radius, and that's cosine for whatever x we happen to be at. That's the cosine. And we have to subtract the radius of the whole. And that, that, this right here, just that piece, that's sine, because this is sine. Okay. So cosine from zero up to the cosine, and then from zero up to the sine, leaves me with this width of this ring. But it's the, it's the disk circle made from cosine minus the disk circle made from sine. Okay, well, I want to tell you the absolute biggest mistake that I see when I go back to Kansas City to grade AP exams for nine days, it's awfully fun, is right here. And, and they always have a volume of revolution that involves washers as one of your um, six multiple. <coughs> you, you don't guys don't have to take it, but it's a free response. But when I see other students from around the country, around the world, the biggest mistake that I've seen in all of my experience is right here. <coughs> They will say this, that it is because, because of this right here. I want you to, if you can still see through the ladder. Sorry, Parker. Parker. It's because of this right here and, this, and the section that you just studied. What you would do if you wanted to find the area between this curve and this curve is you would take the, the you would integrate this curve and subtract the integral of this curve, which would be, and people think of that as, uh, cosine minus sine, which would be the area of this, right? Yeah. That is not what's going on here. That is not even remotely what's going on here. It's not this area. We are not interested in this area. We are interested in the area of a washer. Now this area right here would be, if you think about this as being big R and this is little r, this area would be big R, well, the curve that makes big R, minus little r, and then people want to square that. That is completely and totally wrong and different from what you should do. Way different. Do not do this. Don't get stuck in trying to find the area that you're going to rotate. That is not it. It's not it. It's the area of the ring created from a slice that you pull out. It is not this. Get over it. It is r squared minus r squared. That's way different. This is not the same as this. Is it? And the reason people write this as their integral is because they're thinking, I'm going to take the top minus the bottom to get the area of the thing that I'm spinning. That's not it. It's the area of the disk or the washer that you pull out, which is a radius squared minus a radius squared. It's way different than this. So please don't sucker for that misconception because it happens. I'd say two-thirds of the people that miss this problem miss it that way when I grade these tests. Okay, so it's r squared minus r squared. So in our case, this particular individual case is going to be the integral. I should, well, I should have just put a to b here because this is in general. It's going to be pi times 0 to pi fourths of cosine squared minus sine squared x. That way. Not cosine minus sine squared. Cosine squared minus sine squared. Because that gives you the area of the ring. And this gives you its thickness. So you're collecting volumes of disks. I'm sorry, volumes of washers. Are you with me? Okay, so then you could grab your calculator and do that, or you could remember that cosine, squ <coughs> cosine squared minus sine squared is an identity for wow. sine to x. And you could do it by hand if you had to. But this is an identity. It's not the Pythagorean identity because that would require a plus sign. This is a minus sign, and it actually is an identity for sine to x, which you can easily anti drive. What you can just grab your calculator to it's, it's arriving at this part. That's the most important. Because then you just got your calculator if you want. It's just setting it up. That's the problem. The book says that it, the identity is cosine 2x. Sorry? The book says oh, cosine 2x. I remember wrong. Sorry. I knew it was a double angle formula, but I got the wrong one. So cosine squared minus sine squared is cosine 2x. You can rewrite that, and then you can integrate by hand if you wanted to. Get it in terms of pi, or you can grab your calculator. Mm. Turns out to be pi halves. Is that, the oh, whole, the, is that the volume of that uh, whole thing, or is that just one washer? That's the volume no, of the that's the volume thing. of the entire thing okay. from zero to pi fourths. That, that, that whole, it's the volume of this solid that you see right here with the hole in it, the conical hole. It seems weird because it doesn't 
this looks big, but it's only two high fourths, so it's actually really small. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not really big. But these are the kinds of things, these volumes that you see are the kinds of things that I want you guys to come up with when we're done with this chapter to 3D print. You're going to find the volume using what you learned here, and then we're going to go dunk it in water and see if it displaces that much water. See if you're really right. We'll find that volume. It's kind of fun. It'll be kind of cool. Okay, that's as far as we're going to go today. Because the next concept should be a lecture all by itself. So this is it for today. So you will have discs and shells and these to find volumes of. Okay? All right. Okay, this is the recording for the rest of section 7.3. Anybody watching this that has a book, you need to be on page 401, but only for a minute, because we finished that example three yesterday in the previous uh, version of the recording, and we are now talking about stuff called cylindrical shells. I'm going to present the problem that we have now and see if we can figure out a way to do it. What the situation is now is we're still going to rotate something. We're still going to spin something, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way, and we'll see if you can adjust in your brain, see if you can figure out how to do it. So I want you to consider a parabola that might graph something like this. Oops. We'll start over here, so we'll go like this, come down like this. And I want to consider only the part that's above the x-axis. So I'm going to erase these. But this has an equation. It's just that I only want to consider this much of it. And the solid that I want to make with this two-dimensional shape is not, by the way, we could do it. We could spin it around the x-axis. We spin it around the x-axis, it will look like that. It will look like that, right? If we spun it around the x-axis, it, it would look like a big M&M. &M. Yeah. Kind of. An ellipsoid. I would say it would, it would probably look like an ellipsoid. Yeah, it would look like an ellipsoid, yeah. There it is, yeah. But that is not what I want to do with this. I want to make a solid from this by taking this piece of this parabola and spinning it around the Y. Oh, that's like a donut, then. Kind of. Like a half Like a, like a, like a, like a bagel. Like somebody yeah. cut in half, yeah. yeah. And I want to know the volume of that. It will be flat on the bottom, but it will be curvy on the top. I just spin around that way, and I want to see if I can find the volume of that. People think they're always talking about it. It's actually just Kyle. So, I don't have an equation for this parabola, or this piece of the parabola. I don't have an equation for it, but we could come up with it, which we will do maybe in a few minutes. But that's what I want to spin around the y-axis. So present, just pretend that it, we do have a function for this. We'll just call it f of x for now. So we can refer to it, okay? So this is my function f of x on the, on the grid. How am I going to use, because we're in a chapter on integrals, how could I possibly use integrals to find the volume of something that, and I don't know if anybody can, it's, if we can take this thing and spin it around the back side of the y-axis and come around like this, it'll have a hole in the middle, and it'll look like a bagel sort of cut in half. How are we going to find that volume? So you want x in terms of y, or you want y in terms of x? x in terms of, x in terms of y. So you're thinking maybe we want to integrate along the y-axis, which yeah. means that your slices will look like this. Yeah, a little, yeah, and what do we call it, washer? Around that. Okay. Do you see any problems that could possibly present, or do you want to try it? Well, because aren't you going to have it on both sides? Yeah, because you're going to get plus or minus a square root or something. But... Okay, we don't care about the square root. We can handle that or your calculator can. But if you wanted to know the length of that strip, and then you, if you spun it around the y-axis this way, then you would be, if you pulled your, your vinyl record out, if you pulled, so it comes clear around here, we've got this other one over here that, like that, that's pretty crappy, but, um, you know, so, so this, that, this slice right here spun around like this, and it comes over here like this, and it keeps coming around like this, and so that if I pulled that, out like this, it would look like that again, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what would big R be on this? Big R would be Oh, it'd be different for every piece. Yeah. 
but, it, well, but, but, but remember, it's different for every piece in the problem that we just did just a minute ago, too. But it was determined by a function. What is the function, this piece right here, and then is it a different function for this piece over here, and do I subtract them? I mean, it's got to, big R has got to extend clear out to here, and little r out to here, but it's, it's the same function. What I'm trying to talk you out of is this idea. Yeah, it all makes sense. It's okay, but it was a good idea to start with because it was something you're familiar with and you thought you might be able to apply it here, but it's gonna be difficult to have a function for big R and a function for little r because they're the same function but at different values of x, and it's gonna be tough. Okay, so can you think of anything else? Ooh, here comes Brad. Tell us what to do. <laughs> yeah, come on, Brad. Come solve this for us. That reminds me, I didn't get admittance. You brought us. You brought one in. Okay, we'll just don't hit that with you or your backpack on the way by. <clears throat> we got one. We're missing, we're missing someone. Who is it? John. 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 That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. Okay. So my goal is still to spin this around. So I'm going to leave this on here because that's what we get. We spin it around. It comes around. It sits right there as it passes this plane and then comes around and continues there. We want to find the volume of that thing. And what I'm suggesting, or trying to get your, to lead you along, we, we tried the slicing this way, and we discovered that we have to use the same function to get both R's, and it diminishes as you go higher, and it would be very difficult to use. So I'm suggesting we stick with slices like this, because we can find, uh, we can find, well, we can find, I mean, this will be located at X, and we can find the height of this by taking F of X. We can find out how big that is. But think about that slice now. That slice is going to go around and come back over here, about right here, and then continue around like this. And what you're going to end up with is a, a kind of a tall thingy that's ring-shaped. But how could we find the volume of that? Does it feel like, uh, does it feel like if I spun that around, it would look, what well, would look like the top of a bagel? It might look more like a, like a bunt cake. Yeah. Or sloped in sides. Yeah, slopes in sides. So, so it comes out, the, the bunt cake comes out angled like this, and it comes out like this, and it's round. Or a ring. They call it a ring cake or a bunt cake. Okay. Or like a pipe. It's like a bunt cake. Sure be great if we had a bunt cake. I mean, I just yeah. She would have out. <laughs> I know because people wrote in your books. It's cake day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I heard it from my book. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me. I will not give you even one morsel of the cake if you do not pay attention during the demonstration. Now what I'm gonna need, okay, what I'm gonna need is for someone, well maybe I could turn that and it could stay up there, but please don't bump it. I'm going to do the demonstration right here. And I'm gonna need to turn this. So Devin, if you're watching right now, don't look because you're gonna get dizzy. Can someone please uh, move the ladder so that it's faced this direction and maybe or either that or just take this thing and video it for me? Do you wanna just put it right here? Yeah? Is that can you see the can you see the desk? I'm hoping you can see this well enough, Devin, that you'll be able to... I'll, I'll move the desk a little bit closer. The rest of you, you can use the ladder if you want. The rest of you need to gather around, but don't block this and uh, see what's going to happen, because it's all going to happen right here. You can stand on desks or whatever you want. <laughs> don't die. Just don't fall off and hit my iPad. I don't care if you break your leg. Don't touch my iPad. Right, so I need to make myself a little tablecloth. Devin, you picked one heck of a time to leave. Yeah. And John, you picked a heck of a day to miss. Oh, yeah. I've done this without this before, and it's unsanitary and wrecks my desk. It's a wooden desk that was made for me. It was a gift. 
Move that over so that these overlap a little bit. Kyle. Oh, nice butt. <laughs> okay, so here we have a solid like what this would be that we've been talking about, right? A solid cake. What I want to do is... I want to try to, to, to make a slice that resembles the slice that I was trying to show you about this. We cut it here and we look at just that slice. That slice's got to rotate around back the back of the board and come out there and come around like this so that we get a ring kind of thing. That's what I want to create and try to show you how we're going to find the volumes. Okay? So, um, it's, a funny way to, it's a funny way to slice a cake. I'm going to try to do it right down the middle. We'll pretend it's the one standing up in the middle. Okay? And we're going to slice it like this. I know, this part's boring. Your mouths are watering, but I don't care. More cake for the bang, bang for your buck? You want the middle one. The middle one. Okay, so Wait, I'm making no. sure that that's the really loose. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that part that I just cut right here is like this slice right here. Now I'm going to slice this one right here, but it's going to have to be extra thick so it'll hold up. Okay? I'm going to do another slice here, and I hope you can see what's going on, Devin and John. Come on, Genesis. Now we'll pretend that this slice is the same thickness all the way around, and that it's really, really thin, and it's only DX thick. That is a DX thick. <laughs> DX thick piece of cake. You won't even be able to taste it, it's so thin. <laughs> All right, Kyle, you ready to help me? Yeah, what Since you're done? standing right there. We're going to lift the outside part of the cake off and put it That's my piece for here. Okay, so you get your hands on that and see if it'll lift. And if it won't, we need to make better slices. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Kyle. Okay. Kyle. Kyle, did you wash your hands? Well done. Okay. Wow. Now, to remove the inside so we can look at just this slice, I'm actually going to cut this right here and just take it out a little piece at a time. <laughs> Hopefully it'll fall off without wrecking my slice, I'm hoping. This is where my fingers are slipping together. It's like carving a pumpkin. That's really satisfying. Yeah, it is. I'm going to start cutting my cakes like this. <laughs> I'll start cutting my piece. Well, there's a piece that came off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sin. Oh, the crust piece. Just the crust. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, you sound like a crust eater. I love the crust. Yeah, it's fine. The crust is not. You guys want to open up the cheese? That is like incorrect. Yeah, okay, <laughs> now, <laughs> folks, this is that slice that I was talking about. Got a little bit more there. This is that slice that comes around like this. You can see it right there, right? Yep. The ring. Yep. How could we find the volume of that? Because the integral that we do, we'll collect all these volumes as we go from the inner one out, and we could get the integral to collect them all, but how do we find the volume of that? Well, if you like, like cut it and spread it out, it'd be just like a long rectangle. Yeah. That's the key, right there, okay? Oh. This, is, this is the crux of the demonstration that I hope you will remember. To find the volume of this, you find the volume of this, which is just a big, which is just a big box. A really thin, long box. Yes, it all fell apart. But that's what you have to imagine, is that box that came out of there. So I have to lick my fingers off so I can show you what I mean. I got you half. If, if that thing had held together and it was just a big, long parallelogram, parallelopipet is what they call it. It's a very strange thing. It would look something like this. Right? That's what it would look like if it had held together. Yeah. Okay? Cakes don't do that. Now, what I want you to do before you get to eat this, quit thinking about eating it and focus on the calculus for a minute. How do I find the volume of this? This right here is, we need three dimensions. We need length times, width times, height, right? Yes. What is the width? That's the easy one. Yes. Good. What is the height? F of X. F of X. F of X. F of X. What is the length? 2x. 2x. 2 pi x. 2 pi x. Yeah. What? Yep. 
Listen, listen to me. When this thing was sitting in a circle right here, before I cut it and tried to make it work, when it was sitting like this, what was the radius of that slice? Wasn't it this? Yeah. And what is the circumference of that slice? 2 pi r. 2 pi r, which is x. Wow, that is like an elevated way of making You follow that? I know, right? That's great. So, listen. So the volume of this cake, if we had a function for the parabola, and we'll do that in a minute, the volume of this cake is going to be the integral from where to where? The first to the first point, the x point? From A to B, because yeah. isn't that the collection of rings that we're going to collect? Well, if we went from 0, wouldn't that just be 0? That would be discs. That wouldn't be a cake. That wouldn't be a bunt cake. That would be a cake cake. But the disc would be yeah, like cake. cake. So it's going to go from A to B because that's where we're collecting the slices from. That's how you determine the A and B. Where do the slices begin? Right there at A. And we slice it along like this, and we spin each slice and gather and find the volume of it. And clear over here to B, and then we have this magical thing. Add them all up. But what are we adding up? These. So it will be. Think about this with me. It will be two pi f of x times x dx, dx if you think about it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Now, if instead, just to put a variation on things, I'm going to take this one away. If instead I wanted to take this very same parabola, but I wanted to spin it around this line, not this one, not the axis, but this one, and this is located at negative 2, how will that change stuff on here? X plus 2. It's going to be a lot longer. It would be 2 pi x plus 2. 2 pi times x plus 2. 2 pi times the radius. The radius is now x plus 2. X plus 2. Right? Wow. Wait, and so on. Like what's, what's the negative term? That's, this is, this is the line, the vertical line that I want to rotate it around is moved to here. So the radius of that slice is no longer x, it's 2 plus x. You see it? Okay, and so that will change it like this. It will be 2 pi f of x, and then this will be x, not minus. It's at negative 2, but the radius is x plus 2. Do you see what I'm saying? This method is called cylindrical shells because each one of these that you do, that you cut on the way out, they call those shells because one fits inside the other, so it's like a shell. This is called cylindrical shells. Most people after seeing this call it the bunt cake method. I don't care what you call it as long as you've got a reference for a concept in your mind. And this one's completely different from the stuff you've studied so far because you're finding the area of these really long, skinny things, which you've never done before. Also, and here's how you can tell which method to use. If I were going to take this object right here and spin it about the x-axis, that would look like an M&M. An ellipsoid. An ellipsoid, yep. It would look like that. It wouldn't actually be that, but it would look like that. And we could do that by just taking, by, by, by putting, we would do the uh, um, um, disk method. And the disks would be, they would look like that. When you pull those out and lay them down, it would just be a solid disk, right? If we spun it around this way. You spin it around this way, you're not talking about disks or washers or anything or pulling records out or anything like that. You're talking about shells that stretch out like this. It's a totally different method. And here's how you tell the difference. If your slice is perpendicular to your axis of rotation, you use one of these. But if your slice is parallel to the axis of rotation, you use shells. So it has to do with your slices and whether they are parallel to the axis of things or whether they are perpendicular. Perpendicular is disks and washers. Parallel is shells. Okay, you see it? Now before I give you the cake, I wish I'd have done this first. With this little piece, uh, let me see. I want some people to take some measurements of this and see if we can actually write a parabola that is this cake so we can see what the actual volume of the cake was. That's kind of fun. You okay, we're going to try to take some measurements. Do you want to do it in inches or in centimeters? centimeters. centimeters. If you do cubic centimeters, it's going to be huge. Cubic do centimeters inches. is about that big. Do inches. Do it. You want to do inches or cubic centimeters? I don't care. Centimeters. Centimeters? Okay. All right, so to get this measured, we need to know... Let's see, I'm going to move this in just a little bit about the width of the slice. I have my measure app open right there. Billy, can you do it with that? Yeah. 
In order, hey, just a minute. In order to write the actual function that is this for this k, what do we need? Radius. We need a radius. We need a, an outer radius and an inner radius? Yes. The diameter is 8 inches. Now, where do you want to measure that radius from? The, the, where it's sitting, the base down here? In other words, we're going to need an A and a B, right? Yeah. OK. So um, if the center is right here, can you, can you take some measurements? I, okay. I need to know how far it is. I assume the diameter, which is 8 inches, and then divided by 2, which is 4 inches. Really? So from the center out is 4? So you're saying that B is 4? That's what I'm saying. Is that right? That's that what you're telling, and it's in inches, right? Yep. Okay. And um, so A is the distance from the center to the base of the cake, and that looks to me like, if we want to guess, looks to me like about one and a half inches. Is that okay? Yeah. You want to do that? I can well, that. what's the width from here to here? Can you measure that? Oh uh, yeah. Because we can just take it that way from four. Two point six. That's three inches. That's three inches. I'm telling you, Charles. Okay, so it's only an inch. Yeah. So, so A is one inch because the distance from A to B is three inches. That's what he just measured. Okay, so we need those two things for sure. And then we need to know what else? How tall is it? Go, go. So this distance, this right here is three and a half. About, about right there is about three and a half. How can we write a parabola with this information? Where will the vertex of this parabola be? This is one. A plus B divided. This is four. This is two point five halves. Two point five? Yes. Okay. So this, so so this vertex right here is for there. That vertex is going to be two point five. What? Three point five. Okay. If we have a vertex for a parabola, how can we use it to write it? What, how, do you remember what the, the general form for a parabola? No. A x squared plus b x. Y equals a times x, x minus, minus h squared plus k, where h and k are the oh. vertex. So so far we have this: x minus 2.5 squared plus 3.5, and I need an A and a Y. Well, I, a I need an A. I need an A. What? Yeah, those are the same thing. How are we going to find that A? Um, plug in one of the x-axis points. Or plug in any one of the points except the vertex. Yeah. Any one of the points on the parabola. We could even do this point. What's this point right here? One, one, one zero. One zero. So if I put 0 in for y and 1 in for x, I can find a. OK? Um, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. OK, so 1 minus 2.5 is negative 1.5. Squared is 2.25. So I have 2.25a plus 3.5 oh, uh, equals 0. So I have negative 3.5 divided by 2.25, and that is a. Do you agree? The only reason I'm so sloppy is because my fingers are sticky. <laughs> and I don't want to touch the marker too much. So what we have for our equation or our function is f of x equals, does anybody have a decimal for that? Uh, that one right there? Negative 1.5 1. 5, 5, 5 repeated. Negative 1.5 1. 1. 5 repeated? And that would be 14 9 over. fifths. How many, what's the fraction? Negative 14 over 9. Negative 14 over 9? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay times x minus, um, I'm going to make this 5 halves, squared plus 7 halves. That's the equation of this parabola that we need to spin. So now, how do we find the volume of it? What, if, you, if you can apply this, the uh, concepts we just talked about, how can we find the volume of this? We plug the f of x for the f of x again. I'm going to leave this diagram up here and all this other stuff, um, but I'm going to erase that. so. I, if you, We've got a function. It's right there. Now, how are we going to apply it to And this is what I want to see on a test. If you decide to use shells, I want to actually see a drawing. It doesn't have to be great. 
of this thing like this. You don't even have to put any details on back here. It's all up here and along here. So in this case, what would this be? It would be this. That's the height of any one of the slices is the y value of that function, which is generated by the x we plug in for the slice. You see? Okay. And what is this? The x. And what is this? 2 pi x. 2 pi x. And so our integral will be what? First of all, what's this? 1 to 4 of 2 pi x times that. Close that. <laughs> dx. Now, grab your calculators and see if you can figure out what that is. Because this should be the volume of the bundt cake that we actually sliced up before we sliced it. In cubic inches. It'll probably surprise you. It's probably more than you think. I haven't even shown you that uh, while you're while you're consuming things I will uh, show you show you the, the, the <laughs> demonstration from the computer one, one about 110 then yeah. Yeah. 110 cubic inches? Was it more or less than you thought? You're about right. A cubic inch is about the size of a child's block that's got letters on it, you know, about like that. You need an extra print, please. Dang. 110 of those. I I That's what I'm thinking. You guys keep figuring that out. I got more for you than just this cake. I think Bob's good. Yeah. Keep the tape on. Sure. Here, Devin, you can look at the tape now. What did you do with it? I got seven. I know I like to like exactly seven. Got all good angles on this J. What is that? You're right on the edge of the frame. <laughs> All Devin sees is Boston's butt now. I do have a big nose. That, that is correct. <laughs> right. Red. I love Devin. I don't want to be a question. Actually, not here. Ooh. 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 Okay, were you all the way able to arrive at the 110? And is, is that correct? Is that what we got? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I got 1.75. <laughs> 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 you have to. 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 You You have to. 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 You so I got you baked goods, but they are not bun cakes. That is okay. That is good. No. Okay. I have, and I hope, I hope everybody will find something they like. I have banana and chocolate and blueberry yeah, me too. Oh. Okay, and here are plates. You can use forks if you don't want to get your fingers sticky by using your hand. That's up to you. There should be, there should be plenty for everybody to have at least one whole bucket. There's milk. If you're intolerant to milk, I have water. So here you go. I'm going to set this back up and actually show you what's on the projector to show you in in better, more cool things, ways of showing you this. Okay. I don't know about. That's about right.
Yeah. Okay, and we need to set it so that it's facing this way, if that can still happen. Good. Am I moving? If there's a little circle out there, maybe it'll stay right there. Yes. Like for pink. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I got it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And look at this, because this is the last thing, and that's why I had to record it the way I did. So you have to pay attention, because I like it. This guy. Yeah, I'm Notice the equation of this parabola is negative 0.25, <laughs> and then x minus 8 squared plus 6, so it's kind of like the one we had. And you can see the representative slice, and they made the height of the slice the right side, so it's like a right side rectangle. So, um, show all the original rectangles. There they are. Oh, Hide the original area. Okay. Show the reflective area. So this is what it's going to be as it comes around, as I was trying to show you all day. So all one rectangle, the red one. Here goes. So you can see the creation of the butt cake slice that I created, only it's a lot prettier and standing up nicely. The one thing the author of this program does not do is slice that and stretch it out into a box shape. So you're just going to have to remember that's how you do that. Okay. Um, prepare to revolve another. If I was going to revolve this one, it would get bigger. So if I revolve this rectangle, it's a much bigger slice, so this will contribute more to the volume because it goes farther around. The circumference is bigger. So here are all the shells that make up the butt cake. And your job with the integral is to collect the volumes of all of them. Okay? I know it's a mess, but can you see it? Yeah. Okay. This is the spin region shell. Uh, we're going to revolve it. So here's your actual shape of your butt cake. And just as I showed you before, if I move the axis of revolution, And that increases the R value of the long part of your rectangle. That's all it does. Okay. You got an idea how to handle these shell methods? Yeah. No. Do you all have a good idea in your mind how to determine whether to use shells, disks, or washers? Yes. Yeah. It has to do with what? Parallel shell. Parallel what? Uh, rectangles. What's got to be parallel? Rectangles. Yeah. The slices. The slices to the axis. axis. The slices are parallel to the axis you use this method we've been discussing today. If the slices are perpendicular to the axis, usually the x, but not always, perpendicular to the x, then you're going to use disks or washers depending on whether there's a hole or not. Okay? Hope you got it in your head what to do because you're going to have both kinds on your quizzes and tests. Okay, thank you for indulging us, Devin, and I'm sorry you didn't get to eat any. And John, see ya. Bye.